hey what's up guys uh, so uh, in this screencast uh, I'm gonna show you how to um, install a node.js application so um, uh, I have one that uh, shows um, kind of like a quick start that shows how to kind of um, integrate node.js with mongodb and uh, it's a pretty neat application it's called uptime uh, so it's found on the openshift quick starts uh, page and pretty much you can see here it uses the node.js uh, uh, 0.10 and mongodb 2.4 all right so so it's going to be using the source from uh, a github repo here and um, pretty much uh, we have all we need actually so um let's go ahead and create our application so you we'll, should know by now that um, I'm addicted to RC our know, client tool and uh, let's call it uptime right so uptime and uh, we're gonna use the um, node.js application so node um, 0 0.1 point uh, uh, just a moment here uh, node.js right so node.js all right and we're going to use the mongodb um, 2.4 cartridge and we're going to create it for the OpenShift user and um, yes yeah, so we're going to allow this run through and once the installation uh, has been scaffolded Okay, my session has expired, so I need to log in. All right, so um, once the application has, um, once our, our gear has set up, uh, has been set up uh, correctly with the Node.js and uh, the MongoDB cartridge, uh, we're going to go ahead and um, add the repository here uh, as the upstream uh, remote repo. Uh, that way we can pull the sources from GitHub and um, Kind of um, can push it to our OpenShift origin installation. All right, so um, this might take a while, so I'm just gonna um, come back when the process has completed. Okay, so uh, it has completed the application creation uh, process, and so um, we're just going to go ahead and copy this uh, URL. We're going to point it to the remote uh, uh, URL. So I'm going to use the git. Uh, remote add. I'm going to call this um, uh, maybe upstream and we're going to point it as the master. Alright, so I might make a mistake here. Alright, so we need to go into the uptime directory. Alright, so we need to pull and we need to specify a strategy here. So, um, even though this is not a git um, video uh, basically if you're wondering why I'm using the dash s option I'm just specifying a recursive strategy and uh, this is going to be when merging the files and I'm going to specify the uh, upstream um, and merge it to our master uh, branch on the local installation or local um, cloned copy of uptime so um, you should go ahead and pull the source for uptime that is on the github page and once it's complete then we can push the changes to our openshift installation All right so as usual this will stop the mongodb cartridge and stop the uh the node.js cartridge as well and uh, after deploying the application then it's going to go ahead and start them back up and um, kind of uh, wait for the status to complete all right so right now it's building the node.js cartridge so depending on the um, dependencies that must have been for uptime i can see it's installing um, a couple of uh, dependencies on for for uptime so um, also depending on the list of packages this might take a while so i will come back when the um, dependencies have uh, installed uh, completely okay so um, node.js installed a um, couple of uh, packages uh, basically using if you notice uh, using the npm command uh, it's a package manager for node.js uh, for those of you that um, use uh, kind of build node apps or node applications and if you don't actually um, I will urge you to check out Node.js. Uh, it's the one of the revolutionary ways of uh, building um, kind of um, 
dynamic uh, event-driven applications. Uh, so anyway, you're going to see it in action once the uptime um, deployment has completed, and um, you're going to love uh, Node.js, right? All right, so um, it's reaching the complete stage. It's trying to start the application, um, the uptime application. And as um, soon as it's complete, uh, we can go ahead and um, test the application. All right. So while it's, while it's doing that, uh, you can check out the features of, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, uptime. Uh, you can see you can monitor thousands of websites. You can trick frequency of monitoring. Um, you can record availability statistics. Uh, you know, basically very nice, cool stuff. I uh, can see uptime reports with animated charts. So this is using the Float R two uh, module so um yeah so our application has deployed successfully um just going to go ahead and uh give it a try so uh uptime and we can get the url uh anyway you don't have to actually come to the console remember um everything you need uh is basically here so let's say you don't know um what the url is you can always do an rec app show or show up then you specify the name of the application so in this case it's uptime and um, this will go ahead and show you the details of this application here and of course you can get the um, the application URL uh, here actually all right so mark and copy and uh, we can give it a try and um, voila you can see uh, uptime uh, this is uptime application and uh, yeah let's create our first check so let's check that uh, hey my blog is up just to be sure uh, all right so we're gonna leave this as auto uh, but, but anyway the system will go ahead and figure out um, the kind of um, protocol you're using in this case I'm using HTTP so it's uh, use the same thing as actually selecting HTTP here uh, I can actually specify, uh, you know, regular expressions to kind of detect some things on the site. So let's say I have a page that uh, I want to always check for if it's available. You can always do that. And of course, you can tweak the polling interval. Uh, you don't want to make this too small. I'm just showing you this for as an example. Uh, you don't want it to add to the request to come into your site all the time. But, you know, you can give it a nice threshold. Um, yeah, so give it a name. Uh, this is um, my blog. So... I'm going to save that and um, at the moment you can see that we have one down uh, this is basically uh, the poll hasn't gone yet it just created a new application that um, is not up so at uh, the moment it runs we've set it to 30 seconds so let's give it some time and then after 30 seconds uh, once it runs you can see if the website is up or down all right so um, Anyway, so if you're wondering how this was done, uh, this is all done through the magic of Node.js, uh, which allows for asynchronous programming. Uh, so you can see um, right now it's happening behind the scenes and um, using all sort of events. And uh, you can see that uh, it ran. And for some reason, it's reporting that uh, this is the response on my site. Um, yep. So you can see here it's giving me that status that is slow and and that uh, it encountered a request timeout. So this is um, this is weird, actually. Um, I'm going to go ahead and check to make sure that my site. Yep. So let's let just go. Uh, anyway, so as yes, you can see, actually, it looks like um, it's taking time to check my site. Um, anyway, this is weird. Uh, even though it resolved the site, uh, something weird happened, and so um, yeah, we're going to allow that to run again and. Once it's done, uh, we can see if it's up or down. Anyway, so this is uh, a secondary check. And uh, hopefully this time around it ran successfully and it did. Uh, yeah, kind of got me in for, the, for a minute. So you can see that the site is up and uptime is actually working. And by the way, it's running an open shift origin. So I um, hope you enjoyed this, um, this screencast. Uh, if you have any comments, um, questions or you know suggestions please uh, drop them in the comments below and we will discuss that and um kind of uh hope to see you in the next one thanks a lot